In this video, we will talk about lists. We have already seen that they are a data structure and how to write them, since a list program is built from nested lists. But we haven't really shown how to deal with them. Lists are a central topic in the Lisp world. The term Lisp is a shortening for Lisp processor. We will see that they are often not very memory efficient, but they become useful for certain specific problems, like hierarchical data structures and viewing code as data, which let us change it as we want. But we should not run too fast. The first step is to learn how to work with lists. And now you are truth. In Lisp, it doesn't exist a list object. Let's start an interpreter. We can verify it if we ask the type of a quoted list. The basic element is a cons, which is basically a pair. For example, we could create a cons whose element are 1 and 2. The representation chosen by the Lisp interpreter are the two elements separated by a dot. This is also known as a dotted pair. Now let's assign it to a variable. We can see that uh, a warning is shown because the variable x is undefined, but uh, for the sake of the example, this is not a problem. If we evaluate x, we can see that we get the value back. We can get the first element in a cons using first. In the Lisp world, it is also known as car. To get the second element in a cons, we can use the function rest. The reason for this name will be more clear as we go on. In the Lisp world, it is also known as color. Now, what does this have to do with lists? Let's create a cons whose second element is another cons, whose second element is another cons, and uh, we end it with nil. The Lisp, the Lisp interpreter reads what we have written, constructs an internal object that represents it, and then he has to choose an output representation. And we can see that in this case, the output representation is exactly the one of lists. The reason is that this is exactly what lists are. In computer science, they are known as linked lists. A list is a collection of elements which store some data and contains a reference to the next element. Let's assign the new list to another variable. This structure has many consequences. For example, it's really simple to add a new element in front of the list. We just have to cons the new value. We can see that now y contains the old list and in front of it the value we have just written. On the other end, in general, it's expensive to add a new element in the end because we have to traverse it. Moreover, to access the end element, one has to start from the beginning and follow the references. Now it's also clear why the function which returns the second element in a cons is known as rest, because in general it contains a reference to another cons which is the beginning of a new list. It is also interesting that we handed the list with a nil. It can also be represented as an empty list.
Lisp provides a lot of functions for working with lists, the most simple of which are length, which returns the length of the list, reverse, which returns the list in the opposite order, and append, which takes some list and return a list whose uh, elements are the concatenation of all the elements in the list we passed. It's important to note that those functions do not change the input values. Moreover, we have to remember about the cost of running them. For example, to know the length, we have to iterate over the whole list. In the previous tutorial, we introduced loops. We discussed do and do times. Lisp provides a for each like loop to iterate over lists. It is known as do list and it works as usual. For example, let's try to sum the element in a list. We can define a function sum list which takes as input a list. We define a variable total which is zero at the beginning. Inside we use do list whose first argument is the name of the variable that will iterate over the list, which is the next parameter, and then, which is not mandatory, the return value of the loop. Inside, we just sum the value inside the total. Let's close the parentheses of do list, then the one of let, and finally the one of the function. There was a typo. The fun. Yes, this is not the more comfortable way of writing Lisp, but just for one example, we can do it like this. And finally, we can use this function. And it returns the expected value. We end up this discussion with a small consideration. Often, people immediately connect Lisp with Lisp and conclude that Lisp is not an efficient programming language because it relies on Lisp, while for common tasks, other data structures, like arrays, would be more efficient. This is not true. In Lisp, we have arrays and hash map as all other languages. Lists and the structure of the language are just an additional feature that make the Lisp family of languages unique.